Hello, I'm Jared Skeens and welcome to the Zoom Room. Today, I'd like to cover the last part of our trigonometric series, and this is trigonometry part eight, and it's on circular measure. Actually, circular measure is a different chapter from the, the rest of trigonometry, but I've included it in with the trigonometric unit uh, because it involves trigonometry in more of a geometric ap application. So uh, this chapter is really a review of what has been taught in uh, IGCSE. So in the AS level, in the Pure Maths 1, Cambridge takes uh, those concepts that you learned in IGCSC plus some other prerequisite information and it blends it all together into this unique uh, story or this unique question type. And in uh, some of the older Cambridge curriculum, it was included in a chapter on radians. And one of the reason is because uh, and circular measure for the Cambridge AS level for the pure mass one, they only use the radians formulas for circular measure. They do not use the degrees formulas. Uh, in the, the newer uh, curriculum textbooks, uh, they now call it circular measure, but it's really the same thing. And so I keep it together with trigonometry because it is there is a trigonometric application to it. So really there's no new information as far as AS level. All of the information uh, in this question type has actually been taught before. So what I would like to do is spend a little bit of time going over some of the more likely prerequisite uh, materials and then give a brief review of the circular measure, uh, just in case someone who's watching uh, may not remember the IGCSC information, or uh, maybe you have not yet learned it. So it's, it's important moving forward. So let me uh, spend a little bit of time uh, in review. So first, what I want to look at here are the prerequisites. Prerequisite simply means information that you should already know coming into uh, our current situation, something you should already know, okay? So there are three topics that I have outlined here that are the most likely areas that you will have to draw from, that you'll have to correlate together in order to solve these uh, question types. So the first uh, prerequisite has to do with right triangles. And when you work with right triangles, there are three particular uh, formulas that you should remember. One of them is with uh, basically the, the geometric angle relationship, and that is uh, A degrees plus B degrees plus C degrees, or the three angles of a triangle add up to 180. So that's something you should keep in mind. Also, the algebraic relationship of a right triangle, the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. This is uh, very commonly uh, used also. And then, of course, our trigonometric application, the SOHCAHTOA, which we reviewed that back in the part one of our trigonometric series. And notice I have it starred because uh, this is pretty much guaranteed that you're going to use this in every single uh, question type. Then we get down to uh, geometric properties of circles. This again was taught back in the IGCSE uh, material. And in geometric properties of circles, there were three uh, sets of information that was covered. One of them had to do with chords. So the particular chord principle that you want to remember is that when you have a line coming from the center of a circle to the chord, if it comes 
from the center to the cord and it is at a 90 degree angle with the cord, then that means it cuts the cord in half. Conversely, if your line from the center of the circle to the cord cuts the cord in half, you know it's perpendicular. Okay, so that's the main uh, one of those rules that you learned about cords that you'll need to remember in this question type. Also, there was uh, about tangents. Tangents talks about from a point outside of a circle uh, coming tangent to the circle and the relationship of you know the the tangents and the circle so you might need to review some of that a little bit uh, i don't think that one is quite as important here so uh, i won't get into it too much and then you also had angles which talked about the degrees for example the uh, central angle is twice an inscribed angle that opens to the same arc. So those, those are the things that you learned back in geometric properties of circles. And the one that I think is probably the most important for you is going to be this one on chords. So we can, well, I'll bring that up as we get into the questions as well to remind you. Then the last one would be the circular measures itself, which are arc length and sector area. And it only uses the radians formulas in the pure mass one with respect to circular measure. So arc length is actually this out here, which we'll talk about here in just a minute. The arc length is the length of the part of the circumference that you're dealing with. And we use a little letter S to represent that. And then sector area is like the piece of pi coming to the center of the circle and going out to the uh, arc. That's called a sector. And uh, that formula is also both. All of this stuff here should have been learned uh, back in IGCSE, maybe like grade nine material. So the ones that uh, I have dots on are important that those are very common prerequisites in this question type that you should have ready to use at any point in time. So meaning you should be looking for right triangles in your diagram. You should be looking for chords in your diagram. And then of course the main uh, focus of this is on the arc length and sector area with a trigonometric application somewhere in your diagram. So those three are starred because those you pretty much can guarantee are going to be involved. These other two are also highly likely. And then the rest of the things might be further in the back of your mind, but uh, hopefully not forgotten. Okay. So now we want to get into this circular measure. And I don't want you to just rely on the formulas. I want you to understand how the formulas work so that if you forgot the formula, it's easy for you to figure out. And the easiest way to remember them is actually through the degrees. Now, you're not going to use the degree formulas. Back when you did this in grade nine or whenever it was that you learned it, you had to choose which formula you was going to use, uh, which formula that you were, were going to use um, in the particular situation, depending on whether your angle was in degrees or radians. So let's just review that really quickly. If you're taking a part of a circle, this arc length, it is a part or a fraction of the circumference. So here, 2 pi r is your circumference. Most people will remember uh, formulas for circumference and area of a circle. 2 pi r and pi r squared. Okay? We want the 2 pi r, not the pi d. 
but the two pi r is easier to work with here, and then the pi r squared. So that is our complete circumference and complete area for a circle. So if we're dealing with a fraction of the circumference, then what is a fraction? Well, it's the part that you have over the parts total. So if you're working in degrees, it means the degrees that you have in the angle over the total number of degrees, meaning you have theta degrees over 360. And it's a fraction of the circumference. So if you take this and then you use your bridge, remember our bridge between degrees and radians that we talked about in the second part of trigonometric series? Pi radians is equal to 180 degrees. Two pi radians is equal to 360. So if we notice degrees divided by degrees cancels out, so the units cancel, and that just leaves you with theta on top. If we replace the, three, <coughs> the 360 with two pi, then you can see that the two pi actually cancels, and then what you're left with is r theta. So r theta is the radians formula for arc length, okay? And similarly, with area, the area of a circle, we remember, is pi r squared. So if we take a fraction of our circle, then we have so many degrees out of 360 times pi r squared. Again, the units of degrees cancel. We replace the 360, or you replace the 360 degrees with the 2 pi, and just leave theta as the theta, however you want to look at that, but you convert it into a radians with this bridge. Then you can see that the pi cancels, and so what you have left is 1 half r squared and theta. So these two then are our radians formulas involving arc length and sector area. Now just a couple of vocabulary words that you need to know. Uh, when you're talking about the smaller piece of the circle, which is usually what they're referring to, it's called the minor arc and the minor sector. If you were talking about the outside, then they would refer to it as the major arc and the major sector. But most of the time, when you talk about arc length and sector area, they're referring to the smaller one. But just in case you see the word major arc or major sector, you need to be aware that it's referring to the outside. Also, there's one other thing that you need, and that is sometimes these sectors uh, are capped with a chord. We talked about chords here in this. So what you can have is you can have a chord drawn from one corner to the other corner, and you still have a sector, but what you end up with on this outside is what is called a segment. Okay, so this whole piece is your sector, and then uh, out here you have the arc length, and you have this outer piece of the sector is called a segment, and that leaves the inner piece you can obviously see as a triangle. So that becomes very important when you're dealing with area because sometimes they don't want you to find the area of the entire sector. Sometimes they want you to find the area of the segment. So in order to find the area of the segment, you have to do the area of the entire sector and then subtract the area of the triangle in order to get this segment. So be, be aware of that. That's also a common thing that they want to do is have you divide up your sector into these parts. And usually you have two parts, 
the segment on the outside, that's the part that goes along with the arc length, and you end up with a triangle, not always a right triangle, but you do end up with a triangle on the inside, and those two together will then add up to the entire area of the sector. So uh, you have your minor sector, major sector, uh, arc length, minor arc, major arc, you have triangle, you have segment, you have your two radians uh, formulas, and you have all of this prerequisite material, and it looks pretty easy, but remember, it's not, it will be a challenge, it will be like a puzzle, because Cambridge puts it all together into some weird diagram, it's not going to look like this and into this diagram and you have to look for these pieces and correlate them together in order to answer the question. This is another type that's going to challenge you as a student. Are you the student who just follows a procedure? Because if you are, this is going to be difficult for you. It's, there's not a one procedure that you can memorize. This is another one of those question types that you have to step by step work your way through with what you know correlated together in order to get to the end. So let me set up a question and we'll get started. Okay, here we have set up our first question. And here you can see that the diagrams can be a little intimidating, especially if you're new to this kind of question. So read carefully the uh, information that's provided. I did not write down the entire paragraph, but the paragraph will basically tell you all the information that you see on here. And, uh, you know, for example, it'll tell you that X is here in the middle and, and that this is 10 from here to here, and this is 12. Now, it will also call uh, zero uh, the center of this dotted black, this black dotted diagram. And X is also the center of this blue region, okay? So you should read through that um, because so that you understand the relationship of the material that's on here. Since I'm explaining it to you, uh, I'm not, I didn't write down all the information, but what you're looking at here is this black dotted line is a sector. So you see that uh, the origin here is the center of a circle. So this circle actually goes all the way around like this, and they've only shown a piece of the circle, called a sector. So that means that if OB is 10, and this is a sector where this is the center of an imaginary circle, then that means this 10 actually rotates through the entire sector. So OB is 10. It also means that OA is 10. Don't forget that you can rotate the radius through a sector. Okay, we talked about uh, in the intro part of this that the radius and the theta work together in the formulas, but that radius rotates through the sector. So this 10 is OB, it's also OX, and it's also OA. Also, it talks about the uh, the that this dot right here, I forgot to put it on actually, is the M, and this M is the midpoint of AB, okay? Now this is very important. This goes back to, remember I said talking about chords as a prerequisite? This line that goes from the center here goes through this chord. Now AB, even though AB is blue, and is a part of this other sector, it is also a chord on this black diagram. 
okay, because it goes from point A to point B. It caps off this arc length here that belongs to the sector. And when you have a line going from the center to the cord, if it's perpendicular, it means it cuts the cord in half. Or if M is the midpoint, it means it's perpendicular. So those two pieces of information go together. We see the little perpendicular marker there, and we also are told in the paragraph that M is the midpoint of AB, and that is an important piece of information. So right away, as soon as I see that, I'm going to want to write down the half. Here's 12 is the full. So if this is a chord that is cut in half and it's perpendicular coming from the, from the center, then that means this is 6 and this is 6. So right away, we've established ourselves a right triangle here. And whenever you can find a right triangle, remember right triangles is another thing prerequisite that we're looking for. So here we have a 6, 10 right triangle. And you should recognize this as a multiple of your 3, 4, 5 right triangle. Remember using your Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. You shouldn't have to actually work it out. If you need to, go ahead. But if you're solving for this side here, you're going to get a 6, 8, 6, 8, 10. It reduces to a 3, 4, 5. It's a multiple of your 3, 4, 5 right triangle. That's called a triplet. And you should recognize your 3, 4, 5 uh, right triangle. Same like your 5, 12, 13 right triangle. Those are two very common triplets. So there's already prerequisite from chords we've used and prerequisite from right triangles with the Pythagorean theorem, okay? Now, as we continue to look at this, we see that they want us to show in our first question that angle AXB is 2.498 radians. Well, we don't have an angle AXB up here. We have an arc AXB. So don't be afraid to draw in necessary lines into the diagram. You're allowed to add to the diagram either to create a right triangle if you need to or uh, because it's required by the question. So feel free to add to your diagram. Notice I'm showing work on the diagram. Not everything is gonna be done uh, in the space down here. You will do some work down here, but Use the diagram to your advantage. Look for those right triangles, look for those uh, chords, and, and get some pieces of information filled in to help you out. So we want, uh, and I'm gonna put it in blue because it's gonna connect to our blue arc here. So A to X to B. So X then is the center of this sector. So the blue is also a sector, but from the opposite direction. So here our radius is coming from the X and it rotates through the sector over to the B. Okay, so that's a sector coming from the center here and the black is a sector coming from the center O. So it wants us to find the angle up here, that angle there. Well, I noticed that when we drew in those lines, well, we just created another right triangle. Okay, we created another right triangle. And uh, one of our sides is six. Okay, now, if you, if you notice here, uh, this arc, like I said, goes this way, okay? And this center here is six units long. Okay? Now, this radius here rotates this way. This one rotates this way. And the 10 
rotates all the way through to the x. Notice 10 from 0 to b rotates all the way through. That means ox is 10. And this 8 is only to m. So ox equals om plus mx. Now, one of the things that I'm going to encourage you to do is when you're a little bit maybe not sure what to do, write out for yourself a general formula before you just start doing things. Okay, math isn't about doing, it's about thinking about what you're doing. So what we want to do is we want to find another length here. We have a right triangle. We only have one length here. We need the hypotenuse and we need this little bit of side. And what we have so far is this 8. So we know that O to X is 10 because of this rotates through. And we know that OX is also OM plus MX. So if we plug in what we have, OX is 10. OM, we've already figured out by Pythagorean theorem, is 8. So that means MX has to equal 2. So we get 2 for that little bit right there. Now we have two parts of a right triangle. Uh, now we can calculate the third part. So we do the Pythagorean theorem. So now we do BX squared equals 2 squared plus 6 squared. So bx squared equals 4 plus 36. bx squared equals 40. So that means bx equals root 40. So now we have this part, root 40. And also put root 40 over here because it's a radius that swings all the way through. Root 40 is our radius that swings through that sector. Don't forget your radius swings through the sector. We sometimes forget that. And so XB is same as XA, same as X to this point right here, okay? Now, so we have root 40 here and we have uh, this, what we want to find now is use our right triangle. We want to find this one half, this one angle, just that part right there. So I'm going to call it alpha. Okay, I'm just going to call it alpha. And so that means with our Sokotoa, we're coming from this angle as our uh, point of reference. And we can actually use any trig function we want because we have all three sides. Now we started with the six and two first, so I'm gonna use those. Coming from here, that would be opposite and adjacent. So we can use tangent. Tangent of alpha equals opposite over adjacent. So that gives us alpha equals the inverse tangent of, and that reduces to three. And when we calculate that, we're gonna end up with alpha equals 1.2. 249. Don't forget, set your mode on your calculator to radians. Okay, so our circular measure is only using radians formula, meaning anytime you use a trigonometric function, your calculator needs to be in radian mode. So anytime you're doing a circular measure question for pure mass one, set your calculator in radian mode. Okay, so this is for half of this, but this wants AXB, which is the full angle. So that means we need to multiply this by two. And when you multiply this by two, the angle, you don't have to call it theta if you want, you can just call it angle AB or AXB. Now equals twice that. And so we end up with 2.2. 2.498 and 2.498 is what they want. Okay, so this was a show problem. The nice thing about a show problem, you already know the answer, so you know if you're doing something wrong when you get to the end, whether or not it's right. 
So now we can be confident that we did it right because we got the correct answer. But notice all the things that we had to look at just to start this off. We had to recognize the chord. We had to recognize right triangles. We had to recognize that a radius swings through both directions on these two different sectors that are kind of overlapped from different directions. We had to use our SOHCAHTOA. Uh, we had to use Pythagorean theorem. So there's a lot of prerequisites that were brought together just to show this angle, okay? Now let's look at this, find the perimeter of the shaded region, okay? So when we're finding the perimeter of the shaded region, notice it's the blue part that is shaded. And it looks like a half circle. Be careful that you're not making assumptions based on uh, what the graph looks like. Make sure that you're making uh, informative decisions based on the information presented. It looks like a half a circle. Now you might say, well, it's because I drew it that way. Well, it actually looks like a half a circle in the diagram itself, okay? So, but it's not a half a circle. Actually, it's a segment. It's a segment. How do I know it's not a half a circle? Because X is the center. In order for it to be a semicircle, X would have to be on the chord, and it's not. So if the center is not on the chord, it's not a semicircle. It is a segment, which gives us a different perspective than working with a semicircle. Okay? So find the perimeter of the shaded region. Again, create for yourself a general formula before you just start doing things. So perimeter is the distance around. So I'm gonna set up a little formula here. Perimeter equals A to B. And because it's a line segment, I'm gonna put a flat line over it. And then we want from B back to A plus B back to A, but it's not a line segment, it's an arc. So I'm gonna put an arc over it. That way I can follow here to here, back again, and that's the perimeter. This is my general formula. Now I want to plug in my specific formulas, okay? So P equals, now AB is already given. So since it's given, we can just put 12. But BA is not given, this is an arc. And remember the formula for arc length is R theta, okay? So this is the specific formula for this particular uh, section of the perimeter. Now that I have the specific formula put in, now I can start looking for what pieces of information do I need to get this solved. So my perimeter equals 12 plus, now it's very important on the radius that you pay attention to which radius applies to your question. There are two radiuses on here, or radii. One radius is from zero or O to B, and it rotates through the uh, dotted black diagram. And the other radius is XB rotating through the blue diagram. So we want the radius, the BX, or the X to the B, or the X to the A, either one, it's root 40. So we get root 40 times the theta. Now again, with the theta, be careful because you're gonna be dealing with thetas that are sometimes uh, split in half, or doubled, and you wanna make sure that you get the theta that belongs to the sector, okay? So we're dealing with the blue sector, and our theta is the big here. It's not the alpha, it's actually the double of the alpha, which is the full sector uh, angle, which we already showed from up here. So it's the 2.498, so we multiply this times 2.498, and then when you calculate 
all of that together, we end up with 27.8. You can do it on your calculator to make sure that I'm correct. And you should get 27.8. The reason why I stop at one decimal is because to three significant figures, Cambridge follows three significant figures unless it's an angle measurement, one decimal for degree measurements. And, uh, uh, you know, obvious things like money would go to two decimal places. So unless it specifically says otherwise, like if you look at this problem up here, it actually said correct to three decimal places, which it was already stated 2.498. Uh, but usually you want three significant figures. So 27.8 is our correct answer. Okay, so this is perimeter, general formula, specific formula, including givens, and then find the pieces. And this allows your brain to focus in on specifics and not get intimidated with the diagram. When you start getting all this information on the diagram, it can start confusing the mind. So you want to be looking for specifics like radius, theta, things that you can just narrow in on uh, without the confusion. Okay, so here's the perimeter. Now let's look at our area, see if we can get our area figured out. I'm gonna get rid of a little bit of this information over here. We don't really need it in our way. That way I can come all the way across. We'll just get rid of all of this right here. So it's not in our way. And so let's move on to number three, or I, I, I find the area of the shaded region. Again, this is not a semicircle. Be careful not to jump to conclusions. Pay attention to where the center of your circle is. It's not on the cord, meaning the cord's not the diameter, therefore not a semicircle. So what this is is a segment, like I showed in the you know, earlier part. When you have your sectors divided up like this, you have the segment and you have this triangle. So we need to set up our general formula. I'll set it up over here so that you can see it. So our area of the shaded region, which is the segment, is going to be the area of the sector, the area of the sector that is the, all the blue, minus the area of the triangle, that is this non-shaded part of the blue. So if we take all of the blue, which is a sector, minus the triangle, that leaves us with the area of the segment, which happens to be the shaded region. Okay, so here's our general formula. Think in general terms first. Uh, you know, what chunks, big chunks that you need to do to get it. Then fill in your specific. So area of a sector. Well, that's one half r squared theta minus the area of a triangle is one half base times height. Okay, so that's what we want to start with here. Now that's our specific formulas for each of the bigger pieces. Now we can start going in and filling in the little details and really focus on what we have to figure out yet. Okay, so I'm going to bring this over here. Okay, I'll we'll come over here. And we have one half r squared. So our r again for the blue part is this root 40. So we have a root 40 squared. Well, that's nice because I'll cancel out the root. And then we have theta. Again, the theta is the 2.498 minus one half the base, the base is 12 times the height, the height is two. So this is our area again. And so we set all this into your calculator. You can do it all at once. 
And when you get this all into your calculator, you should end up with 38.0. Actually, you'll end up with 37.96. Okay, you'll end up with 37.96 when you do all of this. But remember that you need to be accurate to three significant figures. Here's one, here's two, here's our third significant figure. You look at what follows it. This is five or higher, so it's going to round our nine up. And when you round nine up, you get 10. So that changes our 37 to a 38. But don't forget to leave the point zero because we need one, two, three. And this zero is significant because it follows after the decimal point. Um, uh, it follows to the right of already significant figures. Okay, so this gives us three significant figures. 38.0 is the number that we want. So be careful on your rounding that when you round up to 38, don't just put 38. You need to put 38.0. It's, I, I hate to see it when students do all the right work, they calculate everything correctly, and they miss a point because of not doing three significant three significant figures correctly and you're like what's a point but if you're in a bad habit you do it over and over again and you end up on a test losing five or six points just because of rounding errors please don't do that pay close attention to that it'll save you uh, it can change an entire letter grade and your final result. So get in the right habit so that you're looking for that. Okay, so here, here's three questions. Here's a typical diagram. This is what we need to do. I'll set up for one more and we'll see what other things that we run into. Okay, here we are with our second problem and uh, it's a little bit more involved. So I'm gonna separate the I from the II. There's only two parts to it. Uh, here we have a circle with center of the origin. It actually looks a little more simple than our last diagram, but it gets a little involved. So here we have a circle center O, radius R. In our sector, the blue part here, we have a sector angle of two theta. On the outside, we have this rectangle. It is uh, designated as a rectangle in the uh, in the description and uh, it's from uh, this rectangle here we can go ahead and put our line across there so you see the full rectangle a to b and uh, this rectangle overlaps the circle but the part of the rectangle that's outside the circle is shaded and the width of the rectangle is r and the length of the rectangle, well, we don't know what that is. So we're gonna get started on it. Here, our part I says express the perimeter in terms of R and theta. Now, when you express an answer in terms of variables, it means you're not gonna get a numeric answer. And this sometimes confuses some students because you don't get to work with numbers all the way through the problem. Students generally like to calculate as they go. But in this case, you're going to have to keep track of the variables as you go. So you'll be adding up and totaling up uh, or putting it into expressions with radius and theta. You're not going to get a strictly numeric answer at the end. Okay, so Let's again start with your general big picture formula. We're doing perimeter. So the perimeter of the shaded region is this, uh, the part of the rectangle that's uh, outside the circle. So let's start with A and work our way around. So we go A to B. But it's important to designate it is not the straight line segment AB. It's the perimeter around the shaded region here. It's the arc length AB. 
So we're going to put an arc on that plus B to C, that is a straight line, plus C to D, that is also a line segment, and then plus from D back to A. So we've come full circle, as they say, although it's not a circle, full rectangle, or not even full rectangle, the full perimeter around the shaded region. So A to B, B to C, C to D, D back to A. This is the big picture formula, quite easy to do. It uh, helps you, it acts as a roadmap for you in the solving process. Don't skip this. People who skip this end up doing pieces, and sometimes they do some of the pieces correctly, but they don't always get it put together right. So this is kind of a puzzle. So keep track of the big picture. Now let's substitute in the, the specific formulas. So we get perimeter equals, well, AB is an arc. So that means we need to do R theta. Now be careful. This is the formula, not filling in the values yet. Okay, this is our specific formula. Plus B to C. Well, we know that B to C is R already because AD equals BC, it's a rectangle. Plus CD. Now, when we look at CD, we know that CD is the same as AB, but we don't know what that is and we don't really have a formula for it yet so we're going to leave that as cd if you run into something that you can't see right away just hold back and you know that you're going to have to work on that later then d back to a is already given as r so hopefully you recognize that bc is the same as ad because it's a rectangle those we fill in as r now here's one of the tricky places this r theta. The r theta is our arc length formula, but be very careful because the theta is actually this whole thing, which is a two theta. So make sure that your theta becomes a two theta down here. It's very easy to miss that because the formula is R theta. So we think we've already put in the theta, but the theta, the angle of our sector in this context is a two theta. And I, I think Cambridge does that on purpose to see if you're paying attention to not only the formula, but also to the information in the diagram. So be careful, what is the radius? The radius is r. What is the theta? The theta is two theta. It's so easy to make that mistake and make sure you're looking for that. So we have two r theta, and now here we have an r and an r, so that we can just combine those plus two r. We cannot combine it to this. This has a theta in it, Different variables, unlike terms, cannot combine by addition, okay? So that has to stay separate. Now, the CD part. This is the part that's not obvious in looking at it. So what we want to do is we want to look for an opportunity to create uh, a right triangle. So if you notice, here we have a sector. We can put our own dotted line in here so that we can create a right triangle. That can be helpful for us. Now, we already know that this here is a theta, right? Because it's now only one of them. So this is now just a theta instead of the two theta for the whole thing here. And we can call this side over here, and by the way, it's a line from the center to a chord again. Remember we talked about that? A line from the center to a chord that makes a right triangle automatically cuts the chord in half. So this side is equal to this side. Don't forget that important chord property. 
So we'll just call this X because that's unknown to us. Now that we've created a right triangle, again, don't be afraid to add to the diagram if it helps you break things down. Right triangles are something you wanna look for. So uh, we did our chord property and we created a right triangle which cuts our chord in half. Now we can use Sokotoa. So I'm gonna do it down here. So this is from our angle opposite and this is hypotenuse. So that's the sine, the so in Sokotoa. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, opposite hypotenuse. So sine of theta, and it's just theta because it's half of the two theta. Theta is in this right triangle here, equals opposite over hypotenuse, which means if we solve for x, x equals, multiply to the other side, r sine theta. And now if we want ab, which is twice of that, ab equals two times x. And ab also equals cd. Okay, so CD equals AB, AB is twice X, X is R sine theta, so we can now replace CD with 2R sine theta. All we have to do is multiply it by 2. So we had to work CD out separately, we had to kind of go in and figure it out, but here we have our perimeter, 2R theta plus 2R plus to our sine theta, okay? So that's basically your steps of working it out. Get the big picture, put in your specific formulas and or given information, and then look for what's missing, what you have to figure out a little bit, pay more attention to, to get those uh, missing pieces. Okay, we have one more part to this, and I'll set it up for you. Okay, the second part of our problem. <coughs> in the case, so we, we treat this separate from this up here. In the case, r equals five, they're now giving us a value for the radius, and the theta is pi six. Now remember, our, the theta, one theta is pi six. So two theta would be twice that. So again, watch what they give you and what's in the diagram. Uh, find the area of the shaded region. So we have a challenge because when we look at the figure of the shaded region, it is a weird shaped figure. It's, it's not our obvious uh, geometry. So we need to think of a big picture here. So what we wanna set up with is our big picture formula, area of our shaded region, put shade, shade here equals, now, well, you can see that the shaded part is mainly inside the rectangle. So let's start with that. Well, it's the area of the rectangle, okay, but not this part here. Well, what is this? This is a segment. This is the segment of this blue sector, okay? So area of the rectangle minus the area of this segment right here. That's our big picture that we have, okay? Now, what we wanna look at is, can we break this down a little bit into smaller pieces? So we can go area, I'll just leave area here. Rectangle. Well, the specific formula is width times length or length times width. Okay. Minus, but segment, we don't have a formula for segment. Segment is a piece of the sector. So we need to broaden that a little bit. I'm going to put it in parentheses because we need to subtract the segment. But the segment, if you remember, is the area of the whole sector minus 
the triangle. So the whole sector minus the triangle part will give you the segment. And we talked about that at the beginning of this uh, presentation as well, that that's one of the things you need to look for. Segment is sector minus triangle, okay? Well, now let's write that out into specific formula. So we had to kind of do the general formula uh, twice because this one needed expanded. So now we have area equals length times width minus area of a sector one half r squared theta minus triangle one half base times height. Okay, so again, it's better because this is like a road map. And if you follow the road map from general to specific, it keeps you from stumbling around and, and maybe finding information that's not relevant or getting confused. And when you get frustrated with the diagram, you end up just doing math and probably gonna make a mistake. So go with this general to more specific and then find the pieces that you need. So let's see what we got here. This is quite long and uh, let's see where we end up. So A equals the length, <clears throat> okay? Well, our length of the rectangle we already saw was, uh, I guess I erased it up here, but the length was twice x. So that means 2r sine theta is the length. So x plus x, that's the length. So if we put the length in here, we get 2 times r is 5 times sine of pi 6. Okay, so that's, this is only a one theta. This one up here is a two theta. So keep track of that. So this is just theta. And so this is the length. Now don't forget the width. The width is r, so times r. So all of this, all of this is the length times the width is the r. Okay, so take your time working through it minus one half, r is five, so five squared, theta. Now this theta is the theta of the sector, and the theta of the sector is actually two theta. So that, again, ask yourself what these variables represent within the diagram. This is the, not the theta down here, which was only part of it. This is the theta of the sector, so it's the two theta. So we need a two in here times uh, our pi six, which is over here. Okay, so two times pi six minus one half base, the base of this triangle is again our 2r sine theta to 5 sine pi 6. And you see how long this is getting. I'm going to have to erase some of this here. Hopefully, we can remember that if we need it. Times the height. Well, we got to find the height here. Well, the height is right here, okay? So how do we find the height? Well, the height is from this angle facing this way, the height is the adjacent side. Remember the X was the opposite side? The height is the adjacent side. We're back to our Sokoto again. So I'll do it up here. Cosine of Again, we're dealing with one theta, not the two theta, because we've cut it in half. So cosine of theta equals adjacent over hypotenuse. 
So the height of our triangle here is equal to r cosine theta, okay? So we have one half, all of this is the base, now times the height is an r, which is a five, cosine pi six. Wow, that's a lot. You can see how it would be easy to get confused in all of this. Again, why it's important to start general work, general formula, specific formula, and then go in and start doing the individual pieces. And obviously you get to those place that you don't know just by looking at it. Look for your right triangles, use your SOHCAHTOA, Pythagorean theorem, whatever it is like that. Go back, plug all this into your calculator, and when you plug all this into your calculator, you should end up with a um, total of 22.7. Okay, so let me check that. So this checks out. The only thing that I forgot to do is I put R here, and our R is 5, so we need to put five there. So all of this is set. You can enter it into your calculator. Be careful. Make sure this is all multiplied together. Minus, make sure this is in parentheses because it's our segment. Segment is sector minus triangle. So we need to parenthesis this off. So this needs a big parenthesis. This multiplied together minus all this multiplied together in parenthesis, and it does come out to 22. Point seven. So this is how your approach should be for these kind of problems. This is all that we have time for on this particular uh, part. But here we've, um, you know, again, I can't emphasize enough setting up your big, uh, big formula, exchange it for the specific formulas, then go through and find each little piece that you need. Sometimes there's a lot. Use your calculator to help you your prerequisite knowledge, correlate it together, and you can be successful at these question types. So this not only concludes our part eight for circular measure, it also concludes our entire unit on trigonometry. We've had trigonometry applied to algebraic, geometric, graphing, all these different ways. And so now your understanding of the trigonometric system has grown and hopefully you've developed a solid base so that if you move on to the pure mass three part, the A-level part, uh, you'll be able to do just fine because really there's a lot of similarity uh, in the question types, uh, but it just expands your identities and a little bit in your solving and it adds, a, it adds some other functions to it. But if you developed a solid basis in, in this trigonometric for pure mass one, you'd be in a good position for the trigonometry in pure mass three. So thank you for listening and hope that you're able to be successful in these question types.